what's going on everybody so we got mike sore done that's out you guys saw the videos i'm so glad everybody liked the exhaust system mike is super happy with it but now we're on to something else as you guys can see or maybe not we're sitting in my 2001 x5 which has been neglected for the past i don't know six months or so um when we were moving the shop we blew some airbags in the rear so we fixed those and then I had a wheel speed sensor go and then we fixed that and then uh, we had a few other little odds and end issues that we just didn't take care of like the front lower control arms need to be replaced because the front end every time you hit the brakes it steers wherever it wants to go. It's a pretty common issue with these and this thing's got a lot of miles on it so it's it's about time for a suspension refresh. Um, and there's a few other problems like currently we have well, don't mind the lights on the left-hand side because the car's not running, but we have a brake and ABS light on as well as a traction control light on, which we got to figure out today what's going on with that. We're going to replace the lower control arms in this video, and then in the next video, we're going to be doing that window regulator because the window only comes down about three inches, and then it stops, and you can't get it back up. And that rear window has never worked from the day I bought the car, so we got a regulator for that. So basically what we got is every part that we need to get this thing up to snuff. And I figure, you know what, while we have the Silverado running perfectly and everything is good with that, which that we just had to put an oxygen sensor in, a couple other odds and ends. Um, while that is running perfectly, what we're going to do is we're going to get the X5 all set and get make sure that that is totally good. Because in the Northeast, it's always good to have two vehicles at the ready no matter what you know you, you should always have an extra vehicle because the weather here beats up on vehicles horrifically and uh it's good to have a second vehicle and especially you know when i tend to drive older vehicles because i can't see paying the prices of the new stuff and whatever else they're prone to issue you know everything i have has almost two hundred thousand miles on it but they all run great and they all require very little maintenance whatsoever. Now, what I'm going to do with this one today is I'm going to show you guys how we diagnose what's going on with the brake and ABS system. And then we're going to go underneath it. We're going to do the front lower control arms. And I'm going to show you guys that these older BMWs are not as scary to work on as everybody claims them to be. So they're, uh, they're not too bad. And, and cost-wise, they're not bad either. So let's get under the hood. The 20-pin diagnostic connector on these older BMWs is actually under the hood it does have an obd2 port but you have very limited diagnostic capabilities from that you have to use the underhood port and the underhood 20 pin in 2000 2001 and i believe 2002 was only on the v8 models the six cylinder models you could do all of the diagnostics right from the obd2 port however with these v8 models they still had the 20 pin underneath the uh underneath the hood so we're going to go under there we're going to see what this abs light is all about hopefully it's just another wheel speed sensor and not the abs module itself and uh yeah so let's go under the hood all right guys so i saved you all the headache of me going through all of the auto scanning features and everything else which takes about five minutes and now we are actually going into the abs module we're going to read the fault codes see we come up with steering angle sensor wheel speed sensor left rear transmits no signals brief power interruption all right, so the steering angle sensor, internal, probably just the cold causing it. So what we're going to do is we're going to reset that code. Wheel speed sensor, left rear transmits no signals. That may be a residual code because the left rear sensor was the one that actually went the first time around. And then the brief power interruption, again, could be just a weird ignition cycle, could be anything. So we're going to go ahead and clear these codes. And uh, our speedometer is working, so we know that the left rear, the left rear speed sensor is responsible for the speedometer operation and our speedometer is functioning so we know that that's good so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead clear fault memory yes we want to clear the codes clear fault memory completed and we will leave it at that and we'll see how everything else goes all right guys so we had to take a brief intermission there to put a battery in a sprinter and in turn, the sprinter peed all over my floor and the entire shop is wet, but we don't mind so much because in the winter time it is super dry and we, for free, actually we got paid to humidify the shop. So, oh, excuse me, I just had dinner too. 
we now have free humidification and non-slip boots. So we're good. We figured out what the ABS issue was, and it was the steering angle sensor in the steering column. So it probably got cold, wet, damp, something, and just freaked out. So recalibrated the sensor, everything is good there. So now what we're going to do is we're gonna get underneath this thing and we're gonna take a look at the suspension because the problem that we're having is we feel a clunk every time we hit the brakes and every time you hit the brakes on the highway or running down the road or whatever, this thing will literally take its own path. It'll go wherever it wants to go, left, right, sideways, doesn't matter. So we've obviously got a suspension issue that every time we hit the brakes, these wheels are moving back and forth and it's messing with the steering geometry and we're, we're seeing all kinds of weird stuff happening. We're seeing a little bit of vibration on the highway at speeds up above 55, 60 ish. So we're going to get it up in the air. We're going to take a look at what's going on. I already know what's going on, but I want to show you guys and we have the parts to replace it. So I'm going to go ahead and get this thing up on the lift and we'll see you in a second. So if you own a German car, AKA BMW, Mercedes, Volkswagen, Audi, Saab, and a few others, they use lug studs instead of lug nuts, which makes tires on and off very difficult. But if you invest yourself in a set of these, they're literally pins. They come in four different sizes, three different sizes, three different sizes for each one of the vehicles. And they just screw into the lug hole and then it gives you a spot to not only put your wheel on and hold it there, but it also keeps your rotor in line with your hub. So good investment. Maybe I'll link those in the description. You can go check them out. But what we're gonna be looking at is we have a sneaking suspicion that this suspension moves rearward when we hit the brakes, which means that something in this suspension setup is amiss. You'll have to excuse my sniveling, it is winter. but. What we're gonna be looking at, first and foremost, is what BMW calls a forward thrust arm, which is right here. Now, this arm has a ball joint at the lower section of the front knuckle, and it has a rubber bushing up at the subframe mount. So what we're gonna do is we wanna first check and see, and I'll use my pry bar as a pointer. I don't know how well you guys can see that, but there appears to be a little bit of a crack in that rubber right there. Now, we'll put the pry bar in here and we'll try to move this. And you can already see, just by pushing the pry bar up in there, we're already moving this quite a bit. So, we've got a lot of play in there. And if I could stop jiggling the camera, you see that there's a lot of play. Now, what that ultimately does is it moves... Ah, God, I hope you guys can see this on camera. But it will move this whole setup back and forth quite a bit. And we'll check the other side. The other side's probably gonna be the same thing. Oh, this one's even worse. All right, yeah. You can see up there at the very top, that bushing is completely smoked. So that moves quite a bit as well. So now what we've got is a bad control arm here and a bad control arm over here. So what we're gonna do now is we'll pop this nut pull out this bolt right here and we have brand new control arms that we're going to put in here and that will solve our issue because now you have to remember here's your tie rod end your tie rod end is connected to your knuckle which is this thrust arm is also now when this moves and i don't know if i can get it to do it without the car being on the ground but when that moves you can see that the rotor actually does turn slightly which means that every time this moves backwards, our alignment is completely off. So we need to replace these. 
So let's go ahead, we'll open up the box and we'll show you the new ones. So there's our arms. Got these from Rock Auto, not a sponsor. Rock Auto, if you're watching, please sponsor. We went with the mid-grade stuff from Rock Auto, which arguably is probably not the best stuff in the world. But truth of the matter is this thing's got 193,000 miles on it. It's a 2001, so it's 19 years old. It was manufactured in 2000. It is 19, almost 20 years old. These parts will probably outlive the rest of the vehicle. And knowing me, I don't keep things very long. I run through vehicles pretty quickly. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna get the other ones unbolted. We got the left one here, right one here. We're gonna get the ones unbolted from the car. We're gonna get these new ones in place and I'll show you guys how much these actually uh, cure that movement issue. All right, guys, so normally you just beat on this thing with a hammer and get it off, but we don't want to ruin the ball joint that's in there because the ball joint does not come with the control arm. So one of the things that we're going to do is use this special nifty little hydraulic tool I have. It's a ball joint separator. It actually separates the, the control arm from the ball joint from the taper shaft of the ball joint using hydraulics. So literally... We just have to crank this a little bit and it should pop it right out. If we're lucky. Yahoo! So yeah, we would have had definitely a difficult time popping that out with just smashing it with a hammer. So it's good to have nice little tools like this guy. And literally all it does is go up in there like that. It pushes on the bottom of the ball joint so that we don't damage the threads or anything of that nature. And then it utilizes hydraulics in the form of this little screw and that little piston. So... You can apply a ton of force with very little effort, popping that thing off of there. And now, we're going to check this ball joint to make sure that it's good. And so far, I'm going to bring you guys in a little closer here. So, these BMWs are funny in the fact that they got a ball joint here, a ball joint here, a ball joint here. And all of them are susceptible to damage. So, you'll see this lower ball joint will tend to... Uh, go out and make noise and the one thing is you cannot check either one of these ball joints with both of the control arms connected because it creates such a weird triangulation that it puts constant pressure on the ball joint now one of the things that i like to check for in these is any up and down movement is no good you don't want that this one doesn't have any it still has some resistance to it which it somewhat stays in the position that you put it in so it feels like it's got grease in it. There's no play in it. I can feel resistance. So that ball joint is still good and we can now go ahead and install our lower control arm. Just so you're aware, no matter what country the vehicle comes from, these are always marked left and right. And left is always going to be for our US people, the driver's side. And for our European people, the passenger side. So left is always the same, no matter what country you live in. All right, I'll get that bolt in there started. You might have to do a little bit of finagling, because like I said, 
These go in kind of weird. Might have to give it a little tap, tap, tap. Yeah, I'm gonna have to give that a little tap. Hopefully you guys can see me. The GoPro angle is wide enough to where you should be able to. You see using our tool, the ball joint nut goes right back on like it's supposed to. We'll give this a little love tap from our BFH. back on the other side Which guys you'll see me using wrenches for most of this and it's because the, the where everything is positioned it's pretty much impossible to uh, get an actual socket or anything like that in here so it's just easier to use wrenches for the whole thing So we're going to tighten this one up. And we might need an Allen wrench for that one. These are usually always a six millimeter, which of course I don't have at the moment. All right, there we go. A little six millimeter. Get that up in there just to hold that ball joint. so we can tighten this nut back up without spinning the joint. And guys, don't just hammer these things on with an impact because inside of most ball joints, it's plastic. And if you start spinning this with an impact at a zillion miles an hour, you're ultimately going to damage the plastic insert in the ball joint and then your ball joint's gonna fail prematurely, like very prematurely. That's tightened up. And now we got to get the other side tight. All righty. There you go, guys. New control arm, all installed, hooked back up to the knuckle, tighten back up. Everything is good again, left side. And we got that nice and tight. And now what we'll do is we'll grab our pry bar again, if we can find it. Because I have a habit of putting things down and not being able to find them again. Should probably just clean the shop. It would make life so much easier. But, you know, we don't like things being easy. So... Let's uh, let's do the old scan and pan. If not, we'll just grab another pry bar and we'll put that down somewhere where we won't be able to find it. And why not? We'll grab another one. All right. So, let's see what we got for movement on this now. All right. So, very very little as compared to very much. 
and broken bushings and all kinds of stuff. So we are now, oh wow, look at that. We got to do an axle shaft. Ugh. Never ends with this thing. All right, yeah, so we got that side done. We're gonna go ahead and do the other side. Don't need to see that because it's identical to this side. And then we actually have one in the rear that I need to replace as well. I believe it's on this side. Yes, this guy right here. You can see all that movement. That one is bad. This one doesn't move at all and is brand new because I replaced that one already because the wheel was about to fall off. So we're gonna go, oh my God, the freaking blinding. So we're gonna go ahead and replace that front one I'm going to replace the rear one. You guys don't need to see it. It's pretty similar to what we just did in the front. We're going to get that done, and then I'll bring you guys back at the end. We'll give you thoughts, comments, all that other happy stuff, and that'll be the end of the video. So here we go. So in doing this and checking, like I had said, this ball joint actually has a little bit of up and down movement, and it is very loose. So it doesn't hold its position. It is definitely a candidate for replacement. The only problem is nobody local has one, and I didn't order any because I had uh, been told that they were done. But this one obviously was not. So what we're going to do is we're going to put it together that's not falling apart, still got grease in it. It's still very smooth. It's just a little bit loose. We'll order up one of those probably for the springtime, and we'll get that replaced. But yeah, just wanted to bring you guys in and show you what you know one that's starting to go bad looks like. I mean, you probably can't even really see the movement, but... It's there, trust me. Just to give you guys a little perspective on why I don't drive this in the winter without changing to all the tires that are up there, which I don't feel like getting down, so that's why I'm driving the Silverado, is heh, these are 20 inch, and I have pretty big hands. That's a wide tire. It's a 315, it's massive, and it floats on everything, so. Winter time, not so good for these. All right, rear section is done. We got the new control arm in. It's a little tricky getting up in the way up in there to get that bolt out, but not too terrible. And I totally forgot that we had to actually deflate the airbag, um, which is as simple as just pulling a line up in the up at the valve block um, in the spare tire area. So not a huge deal, but we got that one done. It took us about a half an hour. And uh, now the rear end won't move anymore. Won't make a ton of noise anymore. Now we're gonna pop the tire back on it and we'll be done. I always try to come up with, it looks like I just had a seizure there, but I always try to come up with something other than, all right guys, but I, I can never come up with anything. So we got all of the control arms done on the X5. We did the little backy forthy and made sure that there was no more clunking, no more banging. Um, no more weird feeling in the front end, let go of the steering wheel, hit the brakes, steering wheel stayed straight, didn't turn, try to turn it out of my hand, all that other stuff. But one of the things that I wanted to emphasize through this video is that those three control arms that we put in this car, I think cost us under $100. I want to say they were, was like 97 bucks for the three of them. One of them was $30 and the other two were, I want to say like $32 a piece. So nothing to break the bank. Um, with normal everyday hand tools, you could do this job in probably two and a half, three hours on your back. It's really not that hard. So if you're thinking about purchasing one of these older BMWs, it might not be a bad investment as long as the car doesn't have a multitude of electrical issues or engine issues or anything like that. If it's just all little mechanical stuff, ball joints, tie rods, control arms, you name it, very easy to do. The parts are very readily available because these things sold like hotcakes. Um, you can get the parts just about anywhere. Any auto parts store can get them. Uh, like I said, Rock Auto is where we buy all the parts for this thing because we're not too concerned with longevity on it because it's already a senior vehicle. Um, but you know what? It's not too bad to work on, even with the air suspension. There's a little valve block inside. Take the hose off, drains the air suspension. You can do the control arm on it. So again, just a recap of what we did to it. We first diagnosed why our ABS traction control lights were on, found out that the steering wheel position sensor or the steering angle sensor was malfunctioning, did a relearn procedure on that with my scan tool, which I know you guys probably won't have, but 
utilized my scan tool, did the relearn on it, and that took care of that problem. Um, secondly, we did the two front lower thrust arms or control arms or whatever you may want to call them, but they're technically forward thrust arms. Um, we did those two, got those done, front end's nice and tight now. Did that one last lower or upper control arm in the rear because that ball joint was smoked completely and I knew it right from when I bought it. it used to squeak and creak and all kinds of stuff. So we got all that done and it's good to go. Suspension wise, it's 100%. Like I said, we got that one ball joint that I'm going to replace in the springtime, but other than that, we're good. Next step we're going to be doing in the next video is we're going to tackle the two window regulators on the passenger side. Now, when I first got the car, the, nothing on the passenger side worked. All the electrics were shot. Found a background inside the door, fixed that, managed to get the front regulator working. A few months after I bought it, front regulator kind of went kablamo. The window comes down about this far, then gets stuck. You can't put it back up, so you have to manually peel it and pull it back up. But if you roll it down this much instead of that much, you get perfect operation. So we're going to tear into that door, figure out what's going on with that. Then we're going to tear into the back door, which doesn't work at all. And I think it's just a bad motor. And we're going to replace that. But not before we go ahead and do all of our testing, test our grounds, do all that stuff. Because we might have the same issue in the back door that we had in the front door with the bad ground and nothing working. So that's the next step on the video. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I hope it was informative. And I truly hope that you gain something from all of our videos. A lot of times, you know what? We do a lot of fabrication stuff, but we also like to help you guys learn how to do stuff on your own so that you can purchase a $1,600 BMW and fix it, make it your own, and be driving a really, really nice car for $2,000. Um, you know, that's kind of what it's all about these days, you know? Buying a new vehicle is not all it's cracked up to be anymore. Yeah, it's a nice to buy a new vehicle, but even the new vehicles are having massive amounts of problems. So why not get yourself something that someone else loved for a bunch of years and just decided to get rid of it because the maintenance costs were too high for them. You can buy it super cheap, put a little bit of money into it, and have yourself a great car. All right, guys, that's all for this one. I could babble forever and ever. You guys know me. But uh, we're going to cut this one short. We're going to go replace those window regulators. You'll see that in the next video. And I will see you guys in a day or two. All right. Have a great night, everybody.